What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers Living. You can see I'm at my home today and I'm standing right where my outdoor kitchen used to be. Keyword, used to be. You guys saw me do a video on how to design an outdoor kitchen and I went through some of the features of my outdoor kitchen and told you I was doing a redesign. Well, guess what? Did you get a new piece of equipment? I did. First piece of equipment showed up. We're not quite ready to build the outdoor kitchen yet, but we figured we'd roll in the new piece of equipment. Show you what it is. You ready? Should we do it? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, tried to do that cool little kick foot thing, but it was the wrong foot. It, was, it needed to be that way. But here it is, guys. First piece of equipment showed up. Now, I know what you're saying. This isn't for an outdoor kitchen. I know that. Here's the problem. We have a little bit of delays building our outdoor kitchen, a couple of reasons. One, I'm waiting on product. And two, you can see we damaged a lot of our deck boards getting it removed. So we're getting the, the deck re repaired and replaced. So in the meantime, I put this on a cart so I could cook on it. So here it is. You guys were wondering if I was gonna make the switch from Kamado Joe. You guys surprised? What do we got here, Chris? Primo, so this is the big dog, the Primo XL. It's currently on a cart, but this is getting built into an outdoor kitchen. Now, I figured I'd tell you guys why I made the switch. You're wondering that, Chris, why I made the switch from Kamado Joe? Hey guys, I did not think you would switch. Yeah, a lot of people didn't think I was gonna make the switch. I wasn't sure myself if I was gonna make the switch, but here's why I made the switch. I'm gonna break it down, show you why, and then to really show you why, we're gonna cook on it because what kind of review would this be if we're not gonna cook on something, right? True. Plus I'm hungry. All right, so why did I go with the Primo? First reason, now this is not the most important and you guys are gonna absolutely light me up. Some of you probably will, some of you won't. Have at it, I don't care. I know this is gonna be awesome. What color is this? Black. Black, what color is the Kamado Joe? Red. Red. So for me, this again, this is not the most important reason. I'm a barbecue guy. I'm gonna tell you why, but the color of the grill actually played a big factor in this decision and, and I'll tell you why. So the way we're building this island is we're gonna have a, a lot of natural cedar wood, like a lot of natural wood grains and then black countertops to kind of match sort of the brown and black of the railing. And then also, if you look over here, Chris, I recently just had my house repainted and we sort of went with like a white and black sort of color combo. My wife had some assistance with this decision making, if you probably haven't guessed why I care about the color, because the, the old ball and chain had a little bit of a say as well. So we'll just leave it at that. But the way that my designs can be laid out, the black, more subtle Kamado was, is gonna be a much more aesthetically pleasing design with my particular island. Now, go ahead and light me up. You don't buy a grill for the color. True, you don't. But in this case, it was just another added benefit. That's my little side rant. Let me tell you the biggest reason. So, the biggest problem I had with my Kamado Joe was it was a classic three, which that's not a knock on Kamado Joe. You can get the big Joe, which is even bigger. But the classic three was just too small for me. So I was either gonna go to the big Joe or I was gonna go to the Primo XL. I kind of knew that all along. But why I like the Primo is one, obviously I like the aesthetic design. And if you go back and watch my Primo all-in-one video, you see that I'm not the biggest fan of the cart. I actually like Kamado Joe's cart better, but since this is gonna be built into an island, this cart I'm not gonna be using permanently. So the cart really didn't play any factor in my decision-making. So if you're in a standalone uh, type situation, maybe re-examine that and take a look. But as I mentioned, they did do some nice upgrades. They do have the spring assisted hood too. I still like the Kamado Joe spring assisted hood better. But for me, the biggest reason was gonna be the fit and finish, number one, and the oval design. Let's get in here and take a look. It was so much more functional for me. And we're gonna demonstrate that on our cook. So the way I cook most frequently on my Kamado is I'm either cooking long briskets long racks of rib, or I'm doing uh, offset style cooking where I can reverse sear. The oval design is absolutely beautiful for that. So 
this long elongated space, I could fit probably at least two, eh, maybe not three. I could fit at least two briskets on this. Obviously a ton of rack of ribs. And then I'm gonna show you on this cook today about why this is so awesome for offset reverse searing. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you now. But real quick, here's what you get standard. If you get the all-in-one, you get this uh, ash tool, you get the lifting grate, of course you get the stand, the grill itself, you get the cast iron divider on the inside with the cast iron little um, ash form, I guess you call it, and then your two cooking grates. So, you still get more out of the box standard with Kamado Joe, and there's still things I love about Kamado Joe, don't get me wrong. A lot of people take me way too seriously. They're like, oh, he doesn't have a Kamado Joe. I'm not buying a Kamado Joe. Kamado Joes are awesome. Primos just happen to be awesome too. And I'm fortunate enough, this is what I have at home, but at work, what do we cook on at work, Chris? We've been using the coyote a lot. Coyote? Yeah, that's one thing. That's the point is at work, we can cook on anything. We cook on anything. So I'll still be cooking on Kamado Joe. I haven't said farewell to it entirely. Just at home, this is what we're cooking on. What else is cool is even though you don't get as much out of the box standard, Primo's come out with a lot of cool new accessories, which we'll be demoing. They do have a rotisserie kit. Uh, they have like a kebab kit for the rotisserie. Um, we have some extension racks, some cast iron grates, which we're gonna be using. And they have a pizza oven in the works. For me, that was a huge reason why I went to Primo. I was talking with them. They, they were asking me, you know, what do you like about Kamado Joe? So honestly, the pizza oven's like one of my favorite things with Kamado Joe. I use it a ton. And I thought it was one of the funnest features. And they said, well, we got one coming. So that kind of eased my brain a little bit as well too, is, is they're stepping up their accessory game, which is super cool. All right, let's fill this up with some charcoal and get it set up for our particular cook. You know, this is so big, I didn't want to just do a ribeye. So we're going to cook something bigger. So we're going to do tri-tip. Who loves a good tri-tip? I do. All right, let's get this set up. All right, first thing I'm going to do Let's take out half a grate. So we're gonna reverse, reverse sear with this. So I'm only gonna use half the cooking space. All right, right off the bat, you can see how the oval shape is a lot more functional for offset style cooking. So we have our divider in. We're gonna have this, this bad guy sitting right here. And then we're gonna slow cook up here and sort of create a reverse sear. Now with this oval design, we just it's so much more elongated, so I have so much more space. It's true on the Kamado Joe or Big Green Egg, whatever you're doing, that circular design just limits you a little bit with your offset cooking. And I was struggling to, to find real estate because I did that so much, I was having a little bit of troubles. So I'm hoping this oval design is gonna help me out. And I think it's gonna be a lot more smoother experience because on the other one, of course, if I would have done the Big Joe, that would have helped. But when I was offset cooking on a classic, a little 18-incher certain round, I could fit only offset, you know, half a pie, four steaks at most. So it'd be super tight. So I got this extension rack because when I'm doing my initial smoke, I want it to be super high because I want to cook low and slow while this is getting super hot over here. So we're going to cook up here. This is a cool accessory they have for it. And we got to thank uh, the guys at Primo. They hooked us up with the setup, kind of told them what we're doing and they, they gave us the hookup. So big shout out to those guys uh, for that as well. All right, should we start prepping our tri-tip? All right, so we have our tri-tip. So you can see tri-tip's just a bigger cut. So I thought it'd be a little more fun than doing ribeyes or some other sort of steak. Plus that's all we do. We're always cooking ribeyes. So what I'm gonna do is just trim off this fat cap a little bit. Okay, I got our fat cap off. So now what I'm gonna do, just kinda use some mustard as like a nice little binder. I don't think it does a lot to the flavor, but definitely helps with our seasoning sort of sticking to it. Let's get, I like to get pretty generous with that. Like I said, you're really not gonna taste it much. And you can pick your favorite seasoning, you know. I always 
preach this with red meat. I don't like to get over the top cute. I don't like sweet with it. You could go basic salt and pepper. My favorite is this Cosmos rub. It's basically salt, pepper, garlic, except I don't have to do the work. It's pretty much pre-made for me. And it's absolutely killer. Chris likes it, right? Yeah. All right, and you can season to taste. I personally like it heavily seasoned. The bigger the cut, the harder that seasoning is to get all the way in there. And it's gone. All right. Wanna follow me outside? Let's go. Oh yeah, let's throw this on the grill. All right, let's put it on. Now this is where the Primo is really gonna show its value. I mean, look how much real estate I had. If I, if I went like this, I could probably fit another one sort of this way. So you could fit two big tri-tips only cooking on half the grill. Now this is a big tri-tip. I asked for the biggest one they had because I knew I was doing this demo. Okay, now let's finish setting up the grill the rest of the way. Let me wash my hands real quick. All right, well, this thing's doing its thing. I got this awesome accessory, this cast iron skillet. Check that out. So it's ribbed on one side and then smooth on the other. I'm gonna do the rib side. So this is where we're gonna finish it on. So here's the beauty. This not only stops direct flame from hitting the tri-tip, but it's gonna help create smoke. And simultaneously, since this is sitting so much lo lower, this thing's gonna start really building heat up. So it's gonna be super simple to reverse sear it. Now what we do, we wait. I'm gonna set this about level two or three open and then close this off. I'm gonna keep it open for a little bit and then come back and close it off. Couple quick, oh, let's keep it going. You good? Couple quick notes. Although I love it, I am gonna miss my friend on the Kamado Joe that had that ash pull out. That was pretty handy. This doesn't have that. Probably because the oval shape. I don't know how you'd pull out, squeeze something oval in that little hole and pull it back out. So I'm just gonna have to do that manually. So I am gonna miss that. And then they came out with a new control tower. It's a little loose, but still seems pretty solid. See, we got some nice smoke coming out of that now. So I want this around 200. Nice big thermometer though, that's pretty nice. And uh, we'll come back and check on it in a bit. But you can see, for my style of cooking, what I use this for a lot, it's really, really conducive for. Because when you're reverse searing or you're, you're doing sort of this split stack setup, when you're split stacking, you, you really only have half the grill available to you at one time. So that's a problem. So in this bigger oval size, I can definitely have a little more play, which is pretty cool. We'll come back and check on this in a bit. All right, well, this is cooking. I thought I'd give you guys a few more thoughts. You guys are gonna say, Trevor, what about the slow roller? You're right. <laughs> this doesn't have a slow roller. And from using the slow roller, it's pretty awesome. So we are gonna miss our friend, the slow roller. He definitely produces more smoke. Um, but the point is, is think about this. Think about what your needs are. Like I said, people take me way too seriously sometimes. Don't just get this because that's what I have. Although you can, it's an awesome choice. But think about what your needs are and apply them to yourself. For example, there's things I like about the Primo better and there's things I like about the Kamado Joe better. In a standalone, I like the cart better on the Kamado Joe. I like the Kamado Joe's ash pullout system. I like the Kamado Joe slow roller. I like their hinge system better. And I like that you get more accessories with it. With the Primo, personally, I like that it's black. I like the color of it. I think it's gonna, for my needs, it's gonna match my situation better. And I'm doing a built-in, so the stand doesn't really matter to me. And the number one reason I got this was the oval design for what I usually use it for. And you have to remember too, this isn't gonna be my only piece of equipment out here, right Chris? Nope. We got a lot more equipment coming. In fact, little spoiler alert, this is one of four. I got, <laughs> four cooking devices that are going into the outdoor kitchen. So we got three more still to go, but this is my Kamado or my charcoal smoker. It's my only smoker I have out here, by the way. So I have one smoker. You guys are gonna wait to have to see the rest of the equipment. But um, that's why I chose this guy, me personally. I think for me, the, the Primo and Kamado Joe are my two top two guys. They're, they're 1A and 1B. It's up for you to decide which one's 1A and 1B. This is personally what I went with, um, but I think they're so far and above the competition unless you get into crazy stuff like Kamado Kamado, but that's 
I mean, it's like an $8,000 Kamado. I mean, no need for that. It's just a little unnecessary, even for me. <laughs> we sell high-end stuff, and I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of money, <laughs> right? So anyways, we'll check back on this in a couple minutes. We're losing our sunlight out here, but uh, let's take a quick peek. This is almost ready to reverse sear. There she is. You don't want to dry it out too much, so I don't like to go crazy on smoking it. But the whole idea, if you're not familiar with reverse searing, is a lot of people think, myself included, that sort of a charcoal or wood smoke flavor tastes better. Um, but the problem is, is a sear, I think, is the best way to enjoy it because it's going to be the juiciest. And so reverse searing kind of gives you a best combination of the two because if you sear it just straight away, it's so much heat, it sears so fast that it won't, uh, the wood flavor, the smoke flavor won't get into the meat. So by reverse searing it, we're gonna let those, that smoke sort of absorb, that flavor absorb into the meat. Then we're gonna finish it with a sear without really losing too many juices. I think personally reverse searing is still not quite as juicy as just a straight sear right off the bat. If you guys are curious about that, I'll include some links below for some taste tests that we did, you know, reverse sear versus sear. Um, but uh, yeah, let's be ready to pull in a second here. All right, guys, we're ready to reverse sear. Now, again, we're not trying to cook when we're doing our smoke. We're just trying to infuse that smoke flavor. This is where we're gonna be doing our cooking. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I like the temp of this. So you don't have to do butter, you could do oil, well, probably hardly anything if you wanted to, but I just think that butter gives us a nice little flavor. I can tell this is a good temp too because it's not overly burning our butter, which is nice. All right, Chris, get in here for this close up. Do a little more down here. All right, let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's searing. Get in there, Chris. Get us a nice close up. Nothing better than searing some red meat and some butter. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? No, it smells really good. It does smell good. All right, let's take a little peek. See where we're at. Ah. Look at that. All right, let me set this to the side real quick. Look at those nice little char sear marks we got too, Chris, from those grill lines. All right, let's put her back on other side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where is it? All right guys, this thing's done. Let's take it off. Look at that. A little burned on the bottom, that's okay. This top part's where it's at. See, I like a little crust because I like a little crunch on the outside. Nice medium rare on the inside. Let's take this inside. All right, she looks beautiful. It's been about 10 minutes and uh, probably could let it rest a touch longer if you wanted to, but I'm getting pretty impatient. So let's give it a go. Yeah, look at that. Perfect medium rare. Nice and chewy on the outside, or nice and crunchy on the outside. Look at that. Nice little smoke ring. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah. Absolutely delicious. I'm getting a lot of smoke flavor, but it stayed really juicy. And then I was able to sear it from the sear and we have a nice crust on the outside, but a nice medium rare on the inside. 
So that's why reverse searing is so cool is but we're really hitting every mark. We get the smoke flavor, check. Sear, check. Juicy, check. Delicious, check. It's awesome. All right, it's absolutely delicious. That's how you reverse sear a tri-tip on a Primo, or really any Kamado, but that's why we like doing it on the Primo. Let me, you guys, let me know what you guys think. Fill up that comment section. Tell me if I made a good choice or a bad choice and tell me why. Stay tuned for more.